Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I am back after a week of drug-induced post-surgery uh, cluelessness. I am host of Chris Felico, along with my man, Jeff Schwartz, my co-host. Jeff, so the holidays brought us a couple of things. I got I got a new shoulder, and, and, you, and you got a new dog. I mean, I, I like your gift a little yes. bit better. Yes, and it also brought us bowl games. We have no idea what's happening, so we got we got three great things happening all at once. No, I'm I, yeah, I'm glad you're back, Bear. I can just imagine you. Um, if you go to your Instagram account, you can see the 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 nice post surgery uh, recliner you have in your house, just sitting there. It's a nice, nice, cool day in, in Connecticut. You got the blanket on you, and you're just angrily live betting bowl games that have no idea how they're gonna how, yeah. how they're gonna finish because you 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 read them wrong. So you're like, ah, I gotta get out of this wager. I gotta li just angrily live betting the other direction uh, because well, it's bowl season. Fortunately, the worst part of like the 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 post surgery breakthrough pain and like when I was really like wiped out on oxy legally of course and uh, i don't know it, 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 it's a, but it's like sunday like the surgery was friday like sunday night or it was saturday night into sunday like the 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 nerve block wore off and sunday was not a uh, fun day so it was more like randomly firing on like nfl games in, in a total fog than, than uh, any college games but uh finally uh, once once i got all that crap out of my system uh, they think it's been better. So uh, now it's just the lack of sleep and figuring out how to how to do that. But yeah, we 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 kept the we kept the uh, the post surgery uh, firing to a minimum. Like that, uh, the the account doesn't look Good too much da too damaged compared to what it was beforehand. Well, after the USC Louisville game uh, the other night, I think I'm just done wagering on any of these bowl games until the cultural playoff games because they, they, they make no sense. Bear, yep. the, the steam, like I, the steam in one direction typically does not hit. Now, it didn't in that Louisville game? You, uh, USC got steamed pretty pretty quickly down to four and a half. But in every other game, you know the 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 Kansas steam right against Kansas. Kansas covered yep. the original number because Bean played. The UTSA steam did not matter because UTSA covered the original number. Um, it, it has not mattered at all. So I'm, I'm excited to get the college football playoffs. North, North, North uh, Carolina game came because, down as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to get to that point because these are the ones. Now, I'm not saying that all the bowl games don't matter, right? The players that are playing the games care about the games. The staffs that are coaching, I think, care about winning those games. But obviously, with the with signing day, with the portaling, with the opt-outs, I mean, everyone is in a different kind of mental state as a program heading into their bowl games. The cultural playoff games are coming up there. Those matter. And so I'm excited to get to those games uh, that really do matter. And we will have some wagers on those in our best bets. We'll talk about those in, in, in the gambling group chat, but you actually have bear one wager before we get to the gambling group chat that you like in bowl season. I think this is a good way to go because team totals and unders and overs, I think are much better wagers than otherwise. So you have Memphis versus Iowa state. I would say it's fair by 10 and a half. It's the auto zone Liberty bowl. It's game. Is not Memphis a home game for Memphis, Memphis, nine and three, Iowa state, seven and five. Normally bear. I give a long preview where I talk about the, the, the against the spread record, the over under, <laughs> maybe a fun stat. None of it matters. None of it matters whatsoever. I'm not even mentioning who covers, who, who doesn't cover games. What do you have, Bear, for the AutoZone Liberty Bowl? Yeah, I, I took the Iowa State team total over. I, I think if you look at uh, the Iowa State offense, it's a, it's an offense that a lot, all their key contributors are all underclassmen. And I think as the year went on, uh, they continue to evolve and score points. I mean, that, that wild snow game at the end of the year, uh, against Kansas State, they put up 45, and, and, and this is more of a play uh, against the Memphis defense. I mean, this is a team you look you look at their yeah. the final five games of the year: about 42 to North Texas, 50 to South Florida, 38 to Charlotte, 38 SMU, and then 21 against a bad Temple team. But I, I don't think they're going to get many stops in this game. Uh, I don't know if I want to lay 10 and a half or 11 or what the number ultimately closes at here. But but, but I think I think the Cyclones are. Uh, are, are pretty good here to go up uh, over that team total of uh, what 34 and a half, I believe it is. Yeah. Memphis defense, you mentioned has not been great this season. I want to bring up a point too, about this game. You know, people want to look at it and say, Oh, this game is in Memphis. It, it, it's it can be important for them to win. 
I don't know. The New Mexico Bowl was in New Mexico, and New Mexico State lost 38 to 10. I, okay, <laughs> it does not matter at all. Any of these things that we used to think mattered for bowl games, except obviously what's on the field. You're right. Memphis defense is not very good. Iowa State has an opportunity here to, to care. Again, caring. We, we use this word caring about the bowl games. I think Iowa State will care about this bowl game. Um, so I'm curious to see where this one goes. So, again, you have the Iowa State team total with over 34 and a half, you said? Yes. Okay, over 34 and a half. That is Bears one wager for now. We will have best bets. We do like the same game. So it'll be fun to talk about that game, uh, a game obviously that matters, a cultural playoff game. We have a wager in, in the Sugar Bowl. We'll get to that in a few minutes, though. Here's the gambling group chat, though. It's going to be me and Bear and Sammy Will Hill. The gang is back together to talk all things college football, bowl games. We preview the playoff games in earnest. We both have sides and takes in those. Sammy a little bit off to the rest of us in that Sugar Bowl, to me the Rose Bowl. We'll talk about all that next. Stay tuned. Gambling Group Chat is right here. Gambling Group Chat is back. Sammy P and Will Hill joining Jeff and I here. Well, I guess, I guess to just get right into it, the college football semifinals are here. Uh, game number one on New Year's Day would be the Rose Bowl. Alabama currently a two-point underdog against Michigan. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little surprised that uh, th this line has not flipped. I would have thought by now that Alabama uh, would have become a favorite in this game because it seems like a, a majority of the uh, prognostications and thoughts and opinions for this game ha has been that, that Alabama will win. So, Will, I'll start with you. Like, like Does it worry you as an Alabama uh, if you were an Alabama backer, like like I am, I, I like Alabama in the game plus the plus the number. Um, does it would it worry you a little bit that the line hasn't flipped the way maybe we thought it might have? A little bit. Uh, I think maybe the, the, you know this is a standalone game. What is this Monday five o'clock Eastern? The, the bets probably day of the game start to come in, especially the bigger bets. So I wouldn't be surprised if Monday we saw that movement. Um, you know, it's funny digging into this game. It, you hope when you spend a little time on a game, you come away with more answers than questions. When I, I really dug into this game, you come away with more questions than answers because this is a Michigan team that whole final weekend conference championship weekend, everyone was caught up in Florida state, Bama, who should get in, who's going to the playoff. It really got lost that Michigan did not have a play longer than like 15 yards against Iowa on offense. Now you could say maybe, Hey, they thought as long as we don't screw this up, we're going to advance. Let's be conservative. Maybe there's something to it, but they have not looked good on offense uh, for, for a long part of the season here. They're really not battle tested with that schedule, but played Ohio state played Penn state. Other than that, they really didn't play anybody. And on the other hand though, Alabama, this is a team that needed the miracle of all miracles to survive against Auburn. So I lean towards, I, I like Bama. I, I think, Michigan, they don't really see a type of quarterback they're going to see in Milrow in terms of a scrambling quarterback. You don't see that in the Big Ten. Uh, th their whole mo is to bully you. It's hard to bully Bama. So I like Bama. I I'm not. I, I don't tease college usually, but throwing Bama in a teaser to get into seven and a half rate. I'd love to be sitting there Monday, Monday evening, Monday afternoon with Bama plus seven and a half, plus eight in my pocket. I don't know, Sammy. Is this anything you bet, or uh, you know, you have a, a strong feel on one way or another? When Michigan was one, one and a half, I did lay money line. I laid minus 120. Um, it's a nervous spot, though. I mean, betting against Nick Saban in this spot, in this round, with all the extra time, is a very precarious situation, as we all know. Because this guy, when you give him a month to prepare, he figures out what you do well. But I I think Michigan is criminally still, even at 13-0, and 0, underrated somehow. Because their defense is just loaded with NFL talent. And I think the big key matchup wise in this game is Michigan's defense against Alabama's offense. And, you know, we go back and look at some of these teams when Bama had Najee Harris and Devonte Smith, Jalen Waddle. And, and I just, I don't see that NFL playmaking talent when it comes to receiver and running back at Bama. Yeah. Milrow has gotten better, a lot better over the course of the season, but I don't know that Alabama is going to score. So kind of lean under two. And then there's a reason guys that we look at this total, it's 45. And then the other semi is 63 and a half. I mean, the numbers basically tell us one game's going to be a slug fest and one's going to be a shootout, but I'm going to be betting against Nick Saban, which again is rather terrifying, but I, I thought the game should be three. Not that power ratings really matter at this point in time uh, because bowl season is chaotic as ever. Anybody can win this game. Obviously it's a one and a half point line, uh, but I am on Michigan just to win. 
Oh, sorry, Barrett. My, my concern about Michigan's no, no, game, no. guys, is, is what Will mentioned, lack of explosive plays. They only have 10 explosive plays their last three games on offense. That's it, 10. And, and these are the three best defenses they played, right? Uh, Penn State, Ohio State, and I guess there was a game in between there, and Iowa. 10, that's it, guys. One explosive play against Iowa. Against Alabama, you cannot dick and dunk your way down the field. You cannot go 13-play drive for a touchdown. You're going to make a mistake. Things are going to go poorly. The other side, uh, Sam mentioned it, too. It, it's right. Like, Milrow's gotten better, right, as we know. But that offensive line, guys, if, if they played it against Georgia, they'll be fine against Michigan. It, it's tough sledding, but they can make enough plays offensively, I think, to win this game. Good. Ten explosive plays in three games for Michigan's offense against the three best defenses they face. That's my concern. Is, is, is Alabama wins this game, you know, 24-20, 17-14? Because Michigan cannot score if they cannot uh, generate explosive plays against this defense. Yeah, a, a couple of things, Jeff, just to kind of put a little tie on that, the, to wrap those thoughts, like, you look at McCarthy, he he suffered an ankle injury, and then something else happened right around that Penn State game. So he was kind of playing hurt at the end of the year. So you would hope, uh, if you're a Michigan backer, that the, the ankle and whatever else was bothering him uh, at the end of the year uh, is healed up over the month or so. Didn't have Roman Wilson for a couple of those games either. Again, then getting him back healthy will be a big deal. But they, we talked about the Alabama offensive line. The Michigan offensive line, I, I worry about them. Uh, without Zach Zinter, because uh, we, we saw the Alabama front play much better towards the end of the year, and you, you worry about losing uh, an experienced, really good player uh, like Michigan did in the Ohio State game, how that might affect them. But he, what Sammy said was really interesting, I thought, too, and the biggest, I wondered about that as the year went on and even into that Iowa game after the Ohio State game. Like, like did we all maybe have a little bit higher of an opinion of Michigan because of their record and maybe overlook the fact that they didn't play a soul uh, during the early part of the year leading up to that Penn State game. So uh, it really is a very, very uh, fascinating matchup to see what happens here. But yeah, I mean, uh, Alabama plus two, Mi Michigan uh, under 45, I think that's the way to go. The other thing I was just thinking about here, sitting here, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the 2017 uh, college football playoff where Clemson was number one, Alabama was number four. Uh, Alabama, I think, was a, sm a slight favorite in the Sugar Bowl, and they just absolutely smothered num the number one team in the Sugar Bowl. That was, that was that Kelly Bryant Clemson yep. team did nothing. On, like I, I wonder if we might be in for a, a little kind of similar type of game uh, next week where, where Alabama number four uh, does wind up beating number one, and they they do wind up getting uh, to the national championship game. So yeah, it, it, it's a like, New Year's Day that field, those colors, that stadium. The it, it, it's like uh, a perfect advertisement uh, for college football. The, the the late night game rematch of last year is Alamo Bowl, uh, Texas. And uh, actually, before I get into it, anybody else has any, anything else to say about the uh, the Rose Bowl, or are we good there? Would you tease it? Did, did you bet it there? Would I tease? Would I tease Alabama to eight and yeah. a half and under fifty one or something? Maybe, Is that what maybe, you're no, about? like Browns. Maybe Browns tonight down to like one and a half and Bama up to eight, something like that. I, I could see that. Yeah, that, that, that's that's not a bad play. I, I, I'm not normally a teaser guy, but I mean, there's no way the Jets are going to score a bunch of points tonight to be, especially in bad bad weather in Cleveland, to be able to. Uh, to be able to really fracture the, you know, I can't, yeah, I can't see the way, the way I see the, the Rose Bowl going, I can't see one team really put, winning by, I, I can't see Michigan winning by double digits over Alabama. I, I don't think they're going to be able to score enough to do that. See, I, I don't, I don't hate that at all. Jeff, sorry. So Michigan has lost six straight bowl games slash playoff games. And for the most part, they have not been close. Now, TCU became close to the end there. I mean, how much of this is Jim Harbaugh overthinks these games? And I think he gets a month to prepare. I think he just goes haywire. I think this has happened, at least in my experience, when I play with coaches in bowl games. They just A month to prepare is too much for some coaches. They overprepare. They overstress. They put in too many plays. They think of too many things to do, and then they get to game day. And, you know, the game last year, their game plan was atrocious on offense. It was really bad against TCU. How much that plays a role in this? Nick Saban wins these games. He seems more prepared in these moments. And Jim Harbaugh's teams in this moment have not seemed as prepared. Is that anything that, that you guys take into consideration when it comes to handicapping these games? 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something you think about. It's, I don't know, Sammy, if you feel differently. Well, I, I, judging by the, the three of you guys, why should Michigan even show up and play? They're oh, not going to score. On. You know, oh, here I mean, we go. Like, oh, here we Michigan go. is still favored. <laughs> this is this is Harbaugh's best defense, the best quarterback he's had in Michigan. He's got two good running backs. Roman Wilson's back. I just and also like I see all these splits. Not that betting splits matter at DraftKings or Fanduel, yep. but. 85% of the bets no. on Alabama, yet the line's moving the other way. I just be careful with thinking that this is a traditional that, Alabama team because it's not. That, right. That, that that's the that, that's the thing that worries me. And, and again, maybe I the way my mind thinks, uh, it just puts too much stock into that. But but the fact that they're just kind of welcoming Alabama as an underdog money and it is just sitting there, go ahead and like that that worries me a little bit. I don't know, if, Jeff, to get back to the initial question, I don't know if it would worry me a ton. Two, a couple of years ago, they were just, they were, Georgia was a, the best team in the country by a lot and had yes. that NFL defense. I mean, that, that, was a, that was a mismatch. Last year, last year, the game was just weird. You had that, the punt, the fumbled punt at the one yard. It just, just a couple of, not of, it was just a weird, weird game. And then, of course, the story about maybe they changed the signals because they got wind in Michigan. So, so who knows? Like, but I, I don't know if I'd lean too, uh, really too much into the uh, the over preparation part of that. But uh, the, the second game that night, uh, rematch last year's Alamo Bowl, uh, Texas and Washington. And Washington did pull the small upset last year uh, in, in that game. It kind of an, another another weird game. You talk about giving guys a month to prepare. I think this is a, a situation you give these two guys a month to prepare, they're going to draw some stuff up. Because I think if you look at what Sarki did in his days at Alabama as a coordinator, and even in some of his ball games, they, they find some matchup problems. They they expose some things. I, I would look for both offenses to have a couple of things that they haven't shown all year long that they prepared for over this past month. Past month. Uh, did this where, where we don't think this is going to be very many points in that Rose Bowl. I, I think this is a game where potentially we could see a bunch of points. So, uh, so uh, but Sam, I'll start with you here. What are we what initial thoughts here? Uh, Washington, Texas. I think you're spot on with the uh, the offensive genius and the brilliance that these two coaches both have, Sark and DeBoer. I was trying to figure out: Do I want to play first half over or game over? Um, Sixty three is a lot, but. It's not when you have NFL talent all over the field. I mean, Washington has two receivers that are going to be in the NFL. Penix has just been making all the throws. And I think we saw in that game against Oregon, there was a lot of smoke about the rib injury and he's got cracked ribs. Well, I, I thought he hurt his rib, you know, three weeks before the Pac-12 championship. So you give him an extra month to get ready and heal up. These guys are going to be throwing bombs on the field too. I mean, you have so much speed and skill on offense and, I, I'll probably end up taking first half over 31 and a half. That's probably what I'm going to do. I haven't done anything yet. Um, it's fascinating too. Like we just talked about Michigan. Here's another undefeated team catching four points. Like all this team has done is win. All this coach has done since he's been in Washington is cover and make you money. And yet they're still sort of getting disrespected to me. I, I sort of lean Washington. Obviously I love Michigan, but to to the point about offense, like I would be stunned if this was a 2017 final or a 23-20 final. Like there's just too much talent on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, Sammy gets his feelings hurt when we disagree with him. So I'm gonna have to agree with him here. I like Washington. I like the over. I think we're gonna see a lot of points. I think what I like here is Washington's gonna have a month to study Texas and gonna realize, hey, we can't run the ball. So we're gonna have to throw it pretty much every down. Maybe we run it here and there as a change up. But when you're throwing every down, that either means you know big plays or the clock stops. That that means offense in in, uh, in points and the thing is with Texas, like you look at the quarterbacks they face, it's a lot of backups. Okay. They faced Bama, but that was early in the year. Bama Milrow hadn't really blossomed yet. I think you can throw on Texas. You can definitely throw on Washington. To me, this is just a back and forth game of, you know, who holds serve, who, who can hold who to a field goal. I don't think we're getting a lot of stops again. It's a high total. So if you have a seven, eight minute drive that results in a field goal or a missed field goal, you start to bite the fingernails a little bit. But to me, this is like a 34, 31, 38, 34 type of game. I like the over and I would take the points here curious where this line closes do we get it down to a field goal I, I could see some money coming in where people the day of the game say hey washington's undefeated and getting four give me washington plus the points 
I, I saw a three and a half out there at Circa. Oh, okay. so that's only three and a half I've seen right now for, but but maybe maybe the fact that three, I mean, Circa's the sharpest book I think we've got in the States. So like if, if they're at three and a half, maybe there will be other books uh, that, that you follow, Jeff. Huskies are the first team to play nine straight games decided by 10 points or fewer win all of them in the Division One era. So it's just 1973. So wow. is this a game, guys, where this all comes crashing down? The Minnesota Vikings, right, from last season, right, 10-0 in one-score games, get to the playoffs, right? The People compared Washington maybe to the 2014 Florida State team that lost to Oregon in the playoff or 2013 Auburn team. Like, is this, is this a game where – Oh, it all comes crumbling down. I don't believe so. I've watched every snap of Washington. You guys know I despise them. I do not like them. But I think they win this game. There's an ability they have, especially late in games defensively, to get enough stops. And I just don't know how you stop their offense, right? I mean, like, there's no answer to Roma Dunze. Like, there, there's not, he wins all the 50 50 balls. It's like 99 to 1 against him. You give them a month to prepare. You mentioned the health. Ro Roma Dunze had a cracked rib. Doesn't have that anymore. Michael Penix is beat up. Not anymore. They just won the Joe Moore War. They have an outstanding offensive line. And I just don't think Texas will be able to keep up scoring with them when you give these teams a month to prepare. And I, I'm, I'm with Washington. Look, it hates me to say this, but I think Washington wins this game outright. I'll take the the, the four points if we can get it right now. I, I know you mentioned the three and a half, but they keep winning these games, guys, and there's a reason for that. They play well in those big situations. They call the right play calls. Kalen DeBoer, isn't Kalen DeBoer like 104 and 11 all time as a coach? Like, guy just wins these games. He's prepared for these games. He's ready to go in these games. And uh, I think Washington is able to get it done. I do not think they beat Alabama, though. I'll put that out there right now. But I do think they beat uh, they beat Texas in, the, in this spot. Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, Sammy. Just, it, I don't need, they're not winning a championship. I can't have that in my life. Okay? It's not going to happen. So, whatever that means, I don't care who they lose to. It could be Texas. But I think they, I, I think they, uh, they beat Texas. Well, one one thing, if you, if you if you do like the dog again, we haven't really had a season like this in the playoff with, with two semifinals with this close of a spread um, in a in a while since I think 2017 when you had that great Rose Bowl game between Georgia and Oklahoma with Baker and that Clemson Alabama blowout that I mentioned earlier. But but beginning in 2017, only only the 18 games in the semifinal and the final, only three underdogs have won outright. So while, while a lot of people like tend to think you're going to get upsets, either all kind of evenly matched type of teams, anything could happen, really hasn't played out that way where, where we have seen uh, favorites win 15 of those 18 games. So we'll see if the, uh, the perceived closeness of these games kind of mixes that up and maybe we do a, maybe we do get an upset. Maybe we get a little, uh, how funny the, the upset scenario is Washington versus Alabama in the uh, in the title game. That's interesting. But the, it, uh, getting back to the total, I wonder. I, I think the key to the game, like I don't think I think Texas is like number one, like priority here. And, and Will, you mentioned it because of the, uh, the their concerns about their secondary and Washington being able to potentially throw on them. If Texas can run out of twelve personnel and, and just pound away and kind of keep Washington off the field. Or maybe they force Washington maybe to kind of go big or go man on the outside. If that happens, then I think all bets are off. Because I I don't think the Washington secondary can cover those receivers man for man. So if Texas can come out and and, and run the ball the, the way that uh, they they think that they can, uh, that that's going to be a massive uh, swing I think for this game. So we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, it's great though. It's, it's clear we all have disagreement here. So it, for the first time in a while I think we definitely do have two uh two semifinal games that I think either uh, wouldn't necessarily be a, a, a shock to see uh any of the all of the permutations and championship matchups coming into play. Um the other uh, the other New Year's six games are they're, they're getting underway soon. Uh Cotton Bowl, Missouri Ohio State. Peach Bowl, Ole Miss, Penn State. I'm surprised a couple of weeks ago, uh, I gave Ole Miss plus four and a half out. I thought that number was going to come down, but it hasn't. So um, I don't know what I'm, what I'm going to wind up doing there. Fiesta Bowl, Liberty versus Jeff's Ducks in a game that probably no one's going to want to watch. You're, 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 supposed to make a, you're supposed to make a sarcastic play, play comment there. Gonna, play, play, play. Plenty of people. I I did. Plenty of people are gonna watch that game. It, it's the it's the prelude to the Rose Bowl, right? You got the Oregon Liberty, yeah. a, a little warm up game for everyone that goes right to the Rose that was, Bowl. That was, that was meant to wind you up to get football. you going. Of course, we're gonna watch it. I 
I mean, look, Bo Nix is playing. Bucky Irving's playing. Brandon Doris. I can't believe, like, Oregon has, like, their three highest draft pick guys are playing in this game. It's yes. shocking to me. I don't know why. I mean, but they're playing. I love it. I mean, it's I great. It. Like, Oregon cares, obviously, about playing in this game. It's not NIL-related. I actually asked. I said, is this, like, an NIL thing where it's in their contracts, they have to play in the bowl game? It's not. They just want to play. So, uh, Bo Nix is going to play. Bucky Irving's going to play. Brandon Doris is going to play. So, if the, Oregon cares about this game, they're going to crush Liberty, in my opinion. But right. bowl games, who knows, man? I mean, look, look, USC blew out Louisville. No one saw that come in. I mean, there's been just a, it's just a, been a random, random bowl season as usual. Jay, I, I think the highlight of the text thread from from last night was, uh, I, I think early it was either late first quarter or early second quarter, where where, where Jeff chimed in. I'm I'm mad at you guys. No one actually told me Louisville stinks. So like, like, like that was um, <laughs> inside. The, but getting Look, back to guys, that, the, the Oregon comment, what you said, yeah. that is an awesome sign for the culture of this program. Like you look at last year, and, oh, Bryce Young, Will Anderson, why are you going to play in the show? That's stupid. You, you're playing. They went out and played. They blew Kansas State out. They were, what, the number one and number two or three picks in the draft. And 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 they're going and they're going out. Will's having a great year. Bryce number of pick and playing a little bit better lately. The culture of the Alabama program is great. You see the culture of the Georgia program. No one's opted out in this game. We don't know if Bowers and Mims are going to play uh, because of injury. But like no one's out, like that. Though these are the types of programs that you wind up seeing make the college football playoff and are able to sustain their, their success. Uh, in, in the regular season, so I, that, that it, it might not seem like a big thing. All oh, Nick's and Irving and those guys are going to play, but but I think internally it shows the type of program that Dan Lanning, oh, by the way, who who was a Georgia and kind of kind of lived that thing that, that has built there. So if I'm an Oregon Ducks fan, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed I did not make the playoff this year. But, but I think the ceiling and and you look at the quarterbacks they got in the portal, like, like Oregon, like if you're looking for for a team to buy on, even though they're going to the Big Ten now, like. I'd be buying Oregon Duck, Oregon Duck stock, Jeff. I have, I have all of it. I'll sell some to you. Do you want some of it? How much are we? How much uh, should, should I sell to you for? I got. All, I'm, I'm excited too. I mean, we great recruiting class. Like, I, hopefully, we beat Liberty and move it along. But I mean, this this is a trend. I think of bowl games. Just I don't know. I think Oregon's going to win. I don't know. Could Liberty win? Sure. I mean, these bowl games, guys. I will, Sammy. I don't know how any how we wager on any of these games outside of the playoff games. We know when guys are going to play. I mean, these games are are you know the steam typically doesn't do anything you bet the opposite of the steam you, you you end up hitting frank harris is out for utsa they still cover the original spread i mean all these games we have no idea what's going to happen yeah it's a little like nfl preseason where who's going to play how long are they going to play it's not it's not a matter of handicapping and matchups it's just more information and trying to figure out how good the backup is uh getting back to oregon liberty oregon team total over 41 and a half Liberty stinks on defense. Oregon is going to score every time they touch the ball as long as they want. They could have 35, 38 points by halftime. Uh, that, that's one I like. I think Liberty probably get their points too, but Liberty just not any good on defense. Like he said, Oregon's going to play all their guys. Jeff, is there a path here where Oregon doesn't get into like the mid forties or, or higher? I think the path is they get up big and just take out Bo Nix, I guess. I mean, that's the path, but they don't really have a backup right now. I mean, Austin Nova says they're backup um, because Ty Thompson's in the portal. And Austin barely played this year. I think he was dealing with an injury. So I don't, I don't know. I think Bo has to almost play the whole game too, which makes Oregon's ability to score the entire game. And look, if Liberty can score to your point, you 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 have, you have to keep the foot on the gas. So I would imagine Oregon gets up there um, in, the, in the 40s. I saw the numbers 42. It's high. It's, it's, a, it's a high number, but I think Oregon should be able to do that. When you look at the numbers, too, I know we we talk a lot about power ratings on this show. I actually, I don't even want to say this because it's so far off from the line, but my true line is 23 and a half. And you look <laughs> at the board and it's 17 and you're yeah. like, all right, either I'm missing something or they're missing something. But I mean, this isn't Old Dominion. This isn't New Mexico State. I mean, Liberty has not exactly had the toughest schedule in the world. And right. I think motivationally, that's all we're trying to understand. And, and from the sounds of it and from the looks of it, when you, you mentioned Bo Nix is going to play, Bucky Irving is going to play, it looks like everybody around this program is going to take this game seriously. And that's always the hesitation when you have a team that just fell flat, should have probably been a playoff team. I mean, they're a 9, 10-point favorite. Win the game you're in, they fall flat, and then everybody opts out or transfers or whatever. But that's not the case here. And I think that's that's my biggest caution with bowl season. People 
build into these narratives. You know, you can't do this, or you can't do that, or this team's going to have a letdown. Like, all of these teams are different. What happened 10 years ago has nothing to do with what happens this week or next week. So I, I'm in agreement with Will. Oregon, how many times is Liberty going to stop Oregon? Two and a half is probably my number. Like, how many <laughs> zero drives? Two and a half. Maybe that's a little low. Three and a half. How about three and a half? Oregon's going to score at will if it wants to. They, they, they really should. I mean, I, I do think that Oregon team totals the, the best the best play in that game. And, and you mentioned about like trying to play psychologists and guess, figure out motivation, what's going to happen. Like uh, it, it doesn't appear to be too much of a guess in terms of the orange ball with Georgia and Florida state. Like I said, Georgia has got uh, no opt outs. Like I guess we don't know about Bowers and, and Mims because of injury, but Florida state, like if you looked at that offensive depth chart, like uh, I, I got a buddy who follows like recruiting and teams were uh, very, very, intently and like there's a guy like on florida state's 2d he's, he's like never even heard of so like the entire offense is out you got some guys playing on defense and it's i mean you, you just wonder about I mean, what's the ceiling for florida state all you don't know, like the oregon ceiling like what's oregon ceiling how many stops is liberty going to get like how many scores will florida state get and it's a georgia team that's going to be playing with the full deck on defense Florida State team total on. There's a bet for me. I mean, there's a path here where you turn the game on. You forget it started and you, oh, Florida, Florida State, Georgia's on. Let me turn it on. And it's 24 nothing Georgia, and Florida State hasn't crossed midfield. I just think uh, it's 13 and a half the team total for Florida State. I could see it. I, I don't see them getting double digits. I don't know how they, they move the ball. I mean, uh, I know Georgia has their opt outs, and maybe they don't want to run up the score too much. But I mean, I, it sounds square to be like, oh, this is just going to be 38 nothing Georgia. But man, I, I, I don't see a path here. For uh, for Florida State to be competitive, I like the team total under. You're not getting the best of the number here. You're laying 20 when a few days ago you could have been laying 14. So that's not a good habit, but it'd be Florida State team total under. If I had to take it or lay it, I guess I'd still lay it. I just, there's pro the, the team total is probably the better way to play it. Though. I just, I, I don't see a path here with a third string quarterback for, for the Seminoles. Any of the other, uh, any of the other bowl games that we haven't discussed yet that might, um, that might be a play for you guys outside of the, uh, the playoff semifinals and the, and the New Year's Six. We've got a bunch of games coming up this afternoon and, and a bunch of games, obviously, this week. It's Sammy, anything out there that you're uh, you're itching to, to get on? Who does Brown play, Sammy? Seven with Maryland. We took seven points in the Music City Bowl. Uh, that line opened two, and then obviously it came out that uh, Tonga Bailoa is not going to play for Maryland, but Maryland still can score even without Baby Tua. So uh, you can still find a couple sevens in the market. Uh, a lot of six and a half, but we did bet Maryland. And then this game is actually going to air very soon. <laughs> it's Rutgers and Miami. Uh, big Miami group thread here, right, Bear? Uh, Absolutely. Went, went over 41 and 41 and a half. Um, rumors of a potential wildcat for the Canes today. Because, uh, you know, Van Dyke Ooh. is gone and Emory Williams is hurt. So we're going to see a yeah, lot of yeah. funky stuff here. Yeah, um, I, would, I, would, I, would I still think that this number is a little too low. Yeah, I, I would think Jacur will probably be the uh, guy. They, they they don't have a, a quarterback situation right now, because <clears throat> so uh, yeah. So who the hell knows? We'll see if uh, if, if Shiano and that defense can uh, can slow them down. But yeah, I, I would think you're gonna get a lot of Wildcat today. Old Big East rematch too. Yeah, I, yeah. I got the two helmets on the All shelf. Right. You can't see it. I mean, Rutgers in Miami. I, I, I did it did it intentionally. Only only guy in the world with like who like literally has Rutgers in Miami helmets on his shelf. Like by design next to each other. Um, How about Arizona tonight? Like Both these teams are going to care. Go ahead, Will. Sorry. No, I was gonna, Arizona's been my team. I can't jump off now. Arizona, Oklahoma. It's actually a good game. It's a little late. Jeff, it's past Jeff's bedtime. He was complaining before we started so, recording. So, He's going to be so in his pajamas. Exciting. He's going to have his milk and cookies. He's got to be, you know, in bed by eight. He's got a little bedtime like he's a toddler. Um, but this will be a fun game. I think Arizona wins. They're going to take it seriously. It's going to matter to them to get to 10 wins. Arizona here on the money line's a play for me. Uh, the, the the wager of uh, will I be asleep by uh, by halftime? Yes, is uh, you have to lay a pretty penny to, to win some money there. Um, heavily juiced. Look, I, I, guys, heavily juiced. Uh, Sun, Sun Bowl, I'm taking Notre Dame, guys. I Look. I know they have some opt-outs, right? But can we talk about Oregon State right now? Oregon State lost nearly their entire coaching staff. They have two offensive coaches that remain and two defensive coaches that remain. And the rest of the game is being coached by analysts 
and, and graduate assistants. They've lost both quarterbacks, their starting tight end, their starting middle linebacker, their starting safety, their starting corner, their place kicker, another wide receiver opted out, their right tackle opted out, their left tackle and left guard are both hurt and did not finish the Oregon game. I, I, they're not going to play. Like, who's going to play? It's Oregon State. They have a one deep. Guys, I know Notre Dame is out. Their tackles, <laughs> and they're, I think they're out of a couple defensive guys. Out of someone. It, this game... There, there's no team for Oregon State to play. The, the, their coach, Trent Bray, their defensive coordinator, who was elevated to head coach, he's not even coaching the game. He's skipping coaching the game. Like, they're already on to next season. Not even worried about this game. So uh, <laughs> give me a Notre Dame. I think it's six and a half now in the Sun Bowl. Um, I think they just, they just roll over. Oregon State's not going to – they don't want to play in this game. What's the Oregon State team total? I wonder. Have any have, 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 have anybody looked at that? I'm not going to look. I think it's like thir- I think it's thirteen something. I think I, thought, I think I'll check it right now. I think I saw thirteen, um, uh, maybe even less. I, I see. Uh, yeah, no, excuse me, seventeen right now. Seventeen. Seventeen. How are they going to move? Ben Gold Branson is playing. Ben Gold Branson. They, they, the, 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 the last time he played a game. In Florida, right. Uh. Did he play the Vegas Bowl? I, I mean, the last time he played a regular season game against Oregon, they didn't even throw the ball in the second half because they were so terrified of him. It worked. They won. But, I mean, like, they're just not going to score any points in this game, guys. So give me Notre Dame here. Yeah, I, I, got, an, I got a, a team, a Notre Dame. Uh, I got a bowl under 46 and a half there. And right now, obviously, it's down to 41 and a half. Just kind of got ahead of the got ahead of the, the, uh, the, the move there. Uh, yeah, uh, under, under 16 and a half. That's kind of high. Hmm. Hmm. That might that might be a play. That might be a play. <laughs> How many points is Iowa scoring versus Tennessee? I mean, it's hard. To, I don't know much about the quarterback Tennessee. I don't know if I want to lay six, but man, Iowa when they step up in competition, it's just. I I know. I know. Did Jeff, did you apply for this offensive coordinator position for Iowa? Did Did you hear back? I I don't know, man. I couldn't take Iowa here. I, I'm tempted to delay the six. And same sort of thinking. LSU, Wisconsin. I I know it, it's no Daniels, but LSU. I just don't know that Wisconsin keeps up with LSU here. The The Tennessee number really su- surprised. Like we we're talking about. Like I I was kind of surprised to see Joe Milton opt out. Right. Like, I get it if you're like a. If you're projected to go in the first round, like you want to, like, but he's like, isn't he like a day three guy? Like that, that, that surprised me for him opting out. I would have thought this would have been a transfer him to go out and have a uh, kind of have a send off for him. But hey, to to each each his own. Yeah, six and a half, thirty five for uh, for Iowa. Hey, some guys bear. They just they can never shed that day one ego, right? They just they can never yeah. shed it. It is what it is. Somebody will fall in love with him at the combine too. He's going to throw the ball 90 yards. He's going to look great yes. in short. Some, yes. Somebody's going to take him way higher than they should. I have a feeling. Oh uh, yeah. He'll yeah, be, be one. He'll be the, uh, the Mar- Jamarcus Russell yes. award winner on, on, his, on his knees, throwing the ball 90 yards and he'll just yep. completely avoid what you've seen on film for the last, for the last couple of years. But, Maybe your jets will pick him. Hey, you know, what? It's six, sixth round, fine. I'm all for it. Speaking, speaking of the Jets, we touched on it a little bit earlier. Uh, Jets and Browns tonight. Uh, Browns up to up to eight at South Point, home of uh, diamond lines for baseball, and it's not baseball season, but well, well, you're supposed to laugh at that. that, that that's another little inside group text, uh, group group thread text, but. Uh, yeah, South Point's got eight, so clearly they they they're fed up with the with Brown's money. Uh, seven and a half elsewhere total. Thirty four seems to be the consensus. I, I know uh, Herbert Street was saying earlier it was out in rain, rain right now in Cleveland. So so who are they all of those? But I mean, we we we've seen enough of Trevor Simeon to uh to kind of know what to expect from the Jets. But uh, I'm not, I'm not going to start like with with a, with a line in this. Game. I'm going to talk. Kind of awards first with it because it was brought up a couple of weeks ago about comeback player of the year and, and ever since this like I was like all aboard like hey Demar Hamlin died in the field last year came if he comes back and like makes the team and plays he's comeback player of the year but I, I the last couple of weeks I really I've kind of I've kind of softened on that some just because of what Joe Flacco has done guy was on the couch and now he's 
making he's, – he's been the best quarterback the Browns have put on the field all year. He's played great. He's got another opportunity against the Jets tonight to, to put up some numbers. The Browns are going to be in the playoffs. And, like, like he's down to, like – he's down to, like, a four to one now to win comeback player of the year. Like, even at that, I kind of think he's still worth a little bit of a bet. Don't you think, Will? Yeah, I think people take the the award too literally. Best comeback player of the year. People say, "Oh, Geno Smith didn't come back from anything. He just came back from not being any good." To me, this story and there's no criteria, there's no guidelines, so it's such a fascinating, such a difficult award to handicap. To me, it's really what's the best story. And the Hamlin thing, it's like, boy, if he comes back and plays, he's going to win. But th- he's really stretching that to the literal definition of like he barely played he's got one or two tackles he's basically done nothing and been just on the practice squad where Flacco on the couch a month ago now he's throwing the ball all over the place they're going to make the playoffs I think Flacco's live I think it's a coin flip between Hamlin and Flacco maybe we're all overlooking Baker Mayfield who could clinch a division title on Sunday they've won four in a row so maybe Baker's got a shot this is a fascinating award Uh, I'm not I'm with you I'm not certain now that Hamlin's winning this award not at all just be careful. I learned my lesson the hard way. I got in the Big Ben Comeback Player of the Year camp in 2020. The year before, shattered his elbow at age 37. He came back. I think the Steelers started that year like 9-0 and or 10-0. and And Ben had something like 25 touchdowns and two picks at one point in time. And I'm looking at the odds like, how is this guy 6-1? to How is he 7-1? to He's clearly the Comeback Player of the Year. And who won it that year? Alex Smith. Because right. he almost lost his life to the leg injury and all the surgeries and all that. And even though Ben had 33 touchdowns on a team that finished, what, 13 and three, he he wasn't even close in the voting because voters are stupid and voters like silly stuff. To, to give a guy who doesn't even play comeback of the year is just ridiculous. But I guess that's a different conversation for a different day. <laughs> no, it's, it's the perfect Did conversation for a different day. Uh, continuing with that line of thinking, though, Sammy, because a couple of years ago when Joe Burrow won Comeback Player of the Year, it was it was Dak Prescott and Joe Burrow. Dak Prescott had missed nearly the entire previous season with that gross ankle injury. Joe Burrow had missed sort of the end of the previous year. And Joe Burrow won that award because he played great the last month of the season. That was it. Dak was the favorite until almost the very end. And then Joe Burrow beat the Chiefs and he had a 400-yard game against the Ravens until Joe Burrow won the award. If Joe Flacco comes down the stretch here and they win tonight, which I think we agree, they might head into week 18 guys with a chance to have the number one seed. It's, it's the Ravens, it's the Dolphins and the Browns. Those are the three teams up for the one seed, not the chiefs. They're they're out of there. Like if they come down to the stretch and they're up for the one seed in week 18, and I know he's only played, I think this will be his fifth start tonight. He hasn't played a lot of football this season. I think he wins the award. Uh, and so I think that's pretty simple. For, by the way, for tonight, I have Trevor Simeon under 176 and a half yards. I, he's not going to throw the ball very much tonight. He's not going to be oh, good. So God, no. that's my one wager oh, for the game tonight. Can yeah, I say I, something I, I, very quickly about this game tonight? We have a couple things in the hopper yeah. right now. We're talking about Kevin Stefanski now is the favorite for coach of the year. There's smoke on Joe Flacco, MVP. Uh-oh. There's talk about the Browns potentially going to the AFC championship, but... There may be a bartender in Chicago Uh-oh. Oh. that likes Cleveland. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. I, I no. Say, no. <laughs> we, we know how this goes. When, when everybody starts talking about the same stuff in this league, I'm, I'm just warning all of you. That's all I'm going to say. Check I, to see I, I if a certain it. someone has released their picks for today. A certain someone that we might like to follow and sometimes fade has not released their picks for today. If that certain person who might have found, I'm not going to say anymore. If that person were on the Browns too, that might, it might be something to monitor. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's a problem. Oh. Do you know what I'm talking so, about, Bear? Uh, I'm so mad. I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm so mad. At, oh. but we'll talk about it on the NFL pod, but I, oh. Yeah, that, 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 just mushing everyone's circa pick too. Just it's it's, and, it's the best thing going. And I thought that guy was he had an unbelievable. The, he, the bartender had an unbelievable week last week. He he he, he, he kneecapped six people out of sixty percent of the circa survivor pool, and he kneecapped like well into five figures of Brock Purdy MVP bets from me. So uh, he 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 uh, he had quite the uh, quite the holiday week. 
He's I mean, like the, that that meme with the Grim Reaper going from door to door, and there's blood on all the doors behind him. That's what the bartender's like. He's going door to door. Uh, uh, at least we at least we can laugh at that. Anyway, all right, good stuff, gentlemen. All for now. I guess we'll be back uh, one more time for this college go around next week to kind of. Uh, Preview the uh, the national championship game, which we, I think we are all in agreement that we really have no idea what the hell to expect this week. So, good chat as always, guys. Bear, are we just wrong about this Alabama Michigan game? Like, I feel like the public and be. where we align, me, you, and and Will are just so different. Obviously, Sammy's on Michigan here. I feel like sometimes those public trends like throw those out sometimes in in some of these games like i just i don't i don't think michigan's gonna win I, I it's like that simple i don't really think they match up well with alabama alabama's played better the last look the auburn game you need sometimes you need one of those games per year when you look at like who wins a championship they have one game a year where they just they shouldn't have won that game they win that game it happens and that was at alabama auburn i think i think i think we're making too much of a rivalry game is a reason why michigan might excuse me, Alabama might not win against Michigan. Yeah, I I see Sammy's point because I don't think this is a a great Alabama team. I mean, in comparison to the teams that Nick Saban has had there, I think it's his best coaching job by far. And I still I still want to know, like at some point, somebody please tell me like what happened the week of that South Florida game. Why they? Why Jalen Milrow was dis, was was sent to the bench? Uh, was it yeah. to kind of a lesson for to him? Was it a, something for hey, we need to see who our backup quarterback is? Was it Nick saying to Tommy Reese, Jalen's our quarterback, and 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 we need to build an offense for him? Like I still want to know the true story about what what happened that week and and why Alabama subjected everybody out there. To the uh, the backup quarterback fest in that disgusting game uh, in, in Tampa that exactly. week, they barely squeaked by the Bulls. So, yeah, like I guess I, I can I can totally see Michigan win this game. It would would not surprise me at all. I, I just have to go with with I think the the team. I, I think the the yeah. style of the game I, I think will favor Alabama. And I know that's a little weird to say, knowing that's going to be an ugly-ish type game, and Michigan certainly is capable of winning an ugly game, but. Uh, you said like I was so surprised at how well that Alabama offensive line played uh, against Georgia really, well. and really was able to get a push off the line. Like they've gotten so much better uh, as the year has gone on. Yeah, they have. All right, let's get to our, our best bets. We both have a bet uh, for the Sugar Bowl. First, uh, let's remind everyone, you have Iowa State team total over 34 and a half as the ways you made earlier in the show. Uh, all right, Bear, let's get to our best bet. What is your Best bet for the Sugar Bowl. Well, I, I laid the four with Texas, and if you go to if you have access to the Circa book, uh, they have it at three and a half. So maybe that's a sign this number may come down to the three and a half. Um, Washington, obviously, an underdog that they won won beaten Oregon a couple times this year as an underdog already, and uh, done done well in that role. I, I just I think Texas is the most complete team of the four remaining teams. I think they, with, with how they can beat you on offense and how good their defense is, especially on that front seven, I, I think they're the team that gives the opponent uh, the most difficulty in preparing for, uh, especially if now the, the receivers are healthy and, and yours is healthy. Yeah. Like if they can run at, at, a, at a single back to tight end this week, that opens up the entire offense for them because that then means that Washington might have to play a little bit bigger up front to kind of stop that running game, which would leave those corners uh, in man coverage against AD and Worthy. And, and that pres- and that would be, I think, a mismatch. So uh, I, I think I think that could be a problem. And, and I wonder, and look, I respect Oregon's defensive line. I just don't think Washington has faced a front that presents they the haven't. problems that they that present that thank you they, 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 that pre- i mean they, they if sweat in that front can get the push up the middle yeah. on panic disrupt that timing that throws that offense entirely off so i like yeah. texas in this game i think they're going to win and I, I think there's a little a little bit of out there that 
Why is Texas really in here? They're only in because Alabama won the SEC and they had to put Texas in. They're really not. I think there's still a little bit of that out there. And I think Texas is hearing that. I think they are highly, highly motivated to prove a lot of people wrong. And especially after last year losing that Alamo Bowl. I like Texas in this game. I have a feeling... Obviously, I know Will and, and you guys kind of disagree with me in the group chat about the way I'm thinking. It would it surprise yeah. me if Washington won? No, but I, I think Texas is the best team remaining of these four teams. You know, I obviously do not like Washington uh, at all, and I uh, keep wagering against them. Bear, they keep winning games. You know, I mean, like they, they, that's the hard part about about wagering against Washington. In this spot is they're getting four points. We all agree it's a shootout. In a shootout. I tend to think the game will be close in the end, right? I mean, it's not going to be a shootout and be a, a ten-point spread, right? I mean, it's a shootout and four points feels like a good number in a shootout in either direction. Um, you know, the the Texas defensive line will be very motivated in this game. Washington's offensive line won the Joe Moore Award very deservingly, so uh, which is the award that, that I'm part of. I'm very proud to be part of it. It's an honor to to be part of the committee. It's the only award in the country that's given to an entire unit that was presented to Washington after practice last week. The 300 pound trophy. It's really fabulous. But we come to find out in the playoff game, the team that, you know, that has the Joe Moore award, the other defensive line bear, they, they bring it. Like, <laughs> you know, they, they want to show that. Uh, that uh, uh, you know, Oklahoma against yeah. Alabama one year. Uh, it's been, it was Michigan the last two years. Um, Alabama won in, in 2020, the championship, but it was Oklahoma one year, I think against Georgia uh, in that playoff game. And so, yeah, it uh, it, it, will, it will have Jinx. Texas most attention in this game. Yeah, the new Heisman jinx. I hope not, because obviously for the award, it's best. I think just I, I just not betting against Washington anymore. The ability for Roma Dunze and Michael Pennis to connect, I think, is a big plus in this game. And they, and they just win all these close games. I'm gonna stay in this game for my best bet. We talked about this in in, in the gambling group chat. It's the way I was leaning as well. The first half over 31 and a half guys. Bear these coaches, Ryan Grubb, Kalen DeBoer, Washington, Sark at Texas. There are two of the best in the country designing an offense. And you give these guys a month to prepare against these defenses, which are not, you know, the, the back end of Texas secondary, the, the whole entire of Washington second uh, defense, which look, Washington's defense numbers aren't good. They just make enough stops in the fourth quarter, which is not like a, it's a thing, but not really a thing to, to quantify, honestly. Uh, but I think the first half of this game, you get the best of what both these teams could do on offense. It would not surprise me if this game was 21-21 at halftime, Bear. And then the second half, it grinded to a little bit of a halt, and you get, you know, 35-33, right? The over hits overall. But uh, so give me the first half over in this game, 31 and a half, two offensive geniuses designing offense, good quarterbacks, good offensive lines, good weapons. Uh, and I think there's a lot of points scored. It's a fast track in New Orleans. Will be a Texas home game. A lot more Texas fans than Washington fans. But I think the over here is uh, certainly in play for the first half. Yeah, it, it, I think that yeah, certainly a, a a higher scoring game. We talked about it in, that, in the pod where was the uh, the sugar the uh, the Rose Bowl rather probably be along the uh, a little bit more along the uh, the, the, the lower scoring end. So if if you had if you had to make a bet on if you just wanted to bet like one of these teams to win the title, which I, at this point I wouldn't do because they, they, you're just better off with the, with the, with the rollover. If, you, if if so, we're sitting we're sitting here. We're sitting here a week from now. We're recording the uh, the championship yeah. game preview. What 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 will the ultimate what what will the national title game be? What what, what will the result be? Well, I, I look. I, I think it's Alabama Washington and Alabama wins. If you're asking me which team, to your point about Texas, is sort of like better equipped to win a championship, to me it's Texas. It doesn't mean that they win the game against Washington, but like if you were to tell me, okay, who matches up better with Alabama? It's Texas. But I think, well, I think again, Washington on a fast track inside, a month to prepare. They're healthier now. It wouldn't surprise me if they lost. And again, I'm, I'm an Oregon guy. I want Washington to lose. I'm not, I'm not picking Washington <laughs> like because I want them to win. I just think they're going to win this game. I think they're going to lose to Alabama. So I have Alabama winning, which obviously will, will make the committee happy uh, because they put them in there over Florida State, who is uh, breaking up with ACC uh, at the moment. A lot a lot happening in the state of Florida with that right now. Yeah. Um, so I have Alabama winning. I have Alabama winning this game. And uh, Nick Saban, look, this might be his, his best coaching job, Bear. I mean, Look, you talk. You, you talked about that that South Florida game after the Texas loss. Um, it is kind of surprising how people wrote off Alabama. I'm not sure I was one of them, but I think I had in the back of my head like, oh, maybe the dynasty's done right now. But no surprise, right? Like you have a, a coach in Nick Saban who 
got his team better throughout the season. That's a sign of a good coach, right? And we know he's a great coach, mm -hmm. but you know the team that the team that playing is playing now looks nothing like the team that's pl that played in the first month of the season, which is what happens with a young team, a young quarterback. As you grow throughout the season, you be, you're better and you're better and you're better and you're peaking. They're peaking right now at the best time. Yeah, I, I think I think next week at this time I'm going to be saying. Uh, Texas Alabama round two, and I think the result is the same. I, I think, I think there's a lot of a lot of. I think Texas is out to prove that that game was not a fluke at all. So uh, yeah, I, I think we're going to get Texas Alabama too. So we'll, we'll see. We you, you mentioned you mentioned about about the Florida State and the Orange Bowl. I mean, any game that's turned into obviously you you saw it coming once Florida State was left out of the playoff. What how we thought. Uh, that would go down. So, shame to see, but totally get it. As you mentioned, these bowl games have been kind of kind of wild and crazy, and the, and the steam and the line moves have been a little bit off so far. Uh, there was, uh, as we're recording this, the uh, the Fenway Bowl is going on there, and there was massive steam that, that game closed at SMU. Uh, I think 13 and a half, and I think it's 7-3 SMU right now. So, uh, <laughs> that move not looking particularly great right now. Um, I'm, I'm not partaking in that. So, yeah, I was happy to see our West Virginia early play benefited. I mentioned earlier we played Ole Miss earlier on. We gave that out, and then that, that move hasn't – it hasn't been the move that I thought we would get. I thought there would be a, a, a buy on Ole Miss, and there hasn't been. So, But uh, so far, so good. I think we're uh, – between the, the games in the column and uh, – the column and we give it. We have Rutgers plus Rutgers plus two and a half. We bought that earlier in the show. Give that a couple weeks ago. KNC State plus three versus Kansas State. But uh, yeah, we're three and one. Well, three and two rather. Cal Texas Tech was a loser. Northwestern Duke was a winner. Uh, JMU was was a loser. Texas State was a winner. And North Carolina was a winner. So between the column and the pod uh, that I did was able to do last week. So nice. it's been okay. Bad bad, bad regular seasons. Hopefully we can get a couple more. Uh, more winners in the book. So another uh, another edition. Ignorant kickoff. Prince Bear Bets in the book. We got one more college version to go. Maybe we'll have a little uh, little crossover and we'll we'll mix a little post national championship game in there as well. Before we just solely focus on the NFL playoffs. For Will, for Sammy, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Make sure you keep subscribing, rating, reviewing, downloading, and watching on that YouTube channel as well. However you. Uh, absorb and consume our our digital media. We appreciate it. Keep on doing it. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.